So I'm here at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base restoration hangar for the National Museum of the Air Force, uh, looking at the XB-42 there and the XB-43 that uh, are to be restored at some date in time. Taking a look at these uh, unique aircraft here. And um, which are similar, but this is the jet version, the XB-43. This they converted into a jet engine powered. Uh, those are the inlets there. And there's the uh, crew entrance hatch. This hangar, by the way, was damaged in a tornado and it's all open right now. Uh, the windows are um, open. Gonna get some snow in here maybe before long. It's November. Well, a week or so before Thanksgiving. So again, this is the XB-43. Wings are off. Apparently they have wings for uh, both XB-42 and the XB-43. Those are the tail planes right there, uh, based on the size. And here you can see the uh, retraction mechanism. Wings have been nicely just sliced off and they retract back into the sides of the fuselage. Again, this is the XB-43 with the dual jet exhausts and the uh, XB-42, which is what I really came over and I'm interested in uh, to take a look at. Potentially going to build an RC model of one just because I think it's kind of cool with the kind of rotating prop set. Well, it was uh, very fast in its day, fastest prop-driven bomber. It never went into production. You can read about it on Wikipedia, where it will correct all my, everything I say. But uh, there's the landing gear on it. And uh, so, really interesting feature of both of these was, was the uh, double bubble canopy. I guess they thought at the time, you know, to cut down on the frontal area was paramount over the ability for the crew to talk to each other. And you can see the crates of stuff. Uh, those could be, that's the, that's probably the verticals right there. This had a shock absorber in the back end because it's a T-tail and to prevent over rotation. Here's the Atlas, which I worked on for gel dynamics. So there's the tail end of it and the spinner there. But that's a counter rotating shaft within a shaft to drive both sets of propellers. It had, uh, I believe, Allison V12 engines, not, not Mer um, Merlin, Packard license built Merlins, um, but Allison engines. And they ran long extension shafts down through it. So here's the bomb bay. It was a very large bomb bay. It's meant to carry the load of about a B-29 at a fraction of the fuel burn and, and with only two or maybe three crew, crew members. Stick my nose up in the Bombay, just a little bit greasy. That's the Bombay of it. Uh, anyway, okay, uh, yeah, that's another, that's uh, probably a horizontal stay right there. Or vertical. Anyway. I won't be able to climb up in there. But would be interesting. This set a speed record back in I think 1946, and uh, its uh, twin crashed soon after that. Not on the same flight, but uh, as I understand it, the pilot had to crawl back through a tunnel back there to uh, pull a pin to cause the props to jettison, and uh, the. The navigator or the third crewman got at it at 1,200 feet. The 
co-pilot got out at 800 feet and the pilot jumped out at 400 feet before it augered in. So anyway, this concludes the little tour of the XB-42.